Hello! You uh, remember these videos I made on these elevators at one time? If you don't, then you should probably watch these two videos right here because somebody else did and uh, he left a comment about why these don't work in the nether and I was like, what do you mean? Of course they do. And then I noticed, oh my god, they have water. Because if you haven't seen the nether before, it's full of lava and netherrack and there's some angry pigment in there sometimes and uh, water doesn't like to be in the nether. So uh, what are we going to do for elevators? Because every once in a while you build a farm that it requires, you know, some way to transport items and sometimes you don't want to use hoppers because they're laggy and minecarts are also laggy and kind of slow and uh, slime blocks are just better and that's kind of the answer right there. So if you didn't actually know this, uh, slime blocks can move items across ice at about 25 blocks. You can push them 25 blocks before they'll stop moving into a into a crawl and uh, every once in a while I don't think it's going to make it to that 26th block, but it might just touch it, and you can count this block here. So in total, you can maybe reach about 27 blocks, because you can see if it's just on the edge, you might just hit it, but uh, that's not really, not really, you know, going to work. So basically, you can only move an item about 25 blocks, maybe 26, and if you count this block, 27. And uh, if you do align them against the ender chest, you'll see you can just push a piston like that, and then you can just align it just like a normal ice stream. And this can all be regulated with a nice little clock, as you'll see in a second. And if you want to replace my concrete blocks with hoppers, then you can make a nice little sorting system out of that. So what you need is you gotta you, you gotta move the items. So you go items go here. You're gonna need some kind of input for the items to go into the stream. As for this, uh, this is just a nice little minecart splitter that'll just put all the items into these droppers. And these will trigger observer clocks just like so. It's just a basic uh, comparator into repeaters. And then um, all of this powers this dust and torch. So if any of these turn on, this torch will turn off. And you get a nice little clock out the back here. And then that'll just trigger on a line of redstone because you got to move the items and uh, that's what this piston does here and then it triggers this elevator so it just pushes this piston forward and they go up and let's see all of that happens you can just drop the items in like so and they'll just spit them onto that block a nice little thing that used to not happen in 1.8 are the items actually stay on this block and are almost entirely stable when getting pushed around like this I have never in this design ever seen these items not um, stay in this spot, so they'll stay on this block or land on that block down below, get pushed by the slime block up against this corner, be pushed by this piston, and then that'll just trigger these couple pistons at the back here, and uh, every single item will come up here. Now that can be into a into a hopper stream like I just showed here. Maybe that block is this block right here, and you can have one more piston doing that, and then that, and then you can put the items into a nice little item stream or or whatever. It depends on where your chests are. You know, maybe your floor level's over here. You need the elevator to bring it up so you can store them in hoppers. What whatever you need to do. So this is a very very unrefined system. Um, I'm not going to really compact any of this wiring. All you need to know is you need some kind of input like this. I recommend this kind of thing. I mean, this system here can handle uh, about 54,000 items an hour if you just kind of drop them on the ground here. I think this will actually work. Uh, I think they'll just be picked up by the hopper minecart below, and then they'll just spit out into here. I'm not recommending you use this, but this kind of concept, because if you've seen my channel before, I work a lot with uh, hopper minecarts, and uh, I'll link a few videos on that in the description below if you haven't seen. Uh, there are nice ways where you can split minecart. Using minecarts, you can split items into like 16 outputs and distribute them very very fast and um, that's just a system I use an example here because if you're doing this I'm assuming you're hooking this up to a farm it doesn't really make a lot of sense to use uh, a system like this in the nether for sorting uh, most people put their storage rooms in the overworld just because it's easy to chunk load them and stuff like that and obviously water is a lot less laggy than dust or or pistons or I mean I guess you could use observers for this system but it's not really recommended but it does answer the question as to uh, how you can move items in the nether. And uh, if you guys want to move these over a longer distance, I can make a second video showing uh, a system where, actually I can set it up while I'm talking, a system where a, push, a piston can push down and uh, move the items along a further distance. So uh, let me just set that up just like so. You can see that in this case it'll just uh, push the piston down and you'll probably need uh, slime or leaves or something like that like that. And it'll just push the items down, and then you can do that, and it'll continue them along. But that's a that's a topic for another video. It's sort of unrelated to how to move items up and down in the nether. And, um, and that's kind of it. So hopefully that answers the question. Hopefully that sparks some of your guys' imagination. Hopefully you'll hop into a creative world and say, wait, I can do that. And then maybe like set up some sort of pressure plate or tripwire activation kind of system, whatever you want to do. Uh, there will be a world download for this if you guys want to check out this specific design. Um, that's it for me, and uh, thanks for watching. Hold up. 
Surely some of you people are wondering why I have a Windows logo on my concrete. Uh, thank you, Pablo, for that beautiful resource pack. But first, I gotta talk to you guys about the Patreon. So, these videos are not cheap in a weird way. So, for me to be able to continue making these videos, I uh, do need to make ends meet somehow. And if any of you guys want to support this kind of content, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. We are offering one major service right now. I mean, every tier has its own little perks, but if you guys want to join the Minerva Patron server, you guys can pledge five or more dollars on there. Or if you have a group of friends or someone you might know who might be interested, if you spread the word, it really does help a lot. And we have a nice little community down there, so if you guys want to join that community or join our Discord or the special role or whatnot, you guys can check that out in the link in the description below. And uh, that's it for my plug, keeping it short and sweet. So, we were working on our slime farm on Minerva, and uh, black concrete is really, 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 really hard to work with. I don't know if you've ever built in bulk before, but it is, um, it is so black, I can't, I, I can't even see anything. So that is why my uh, my resource pack is is a Windows logo because Pablo decided he would fix that for us in a stream. So if you guys want to check out that stream, link in the description below. And uh, that's it for me now. Uh, thanks for watching.